going to extubate the patient. Before learning when to extubate the patient, let's see what's winning and spontaneous bleeding child. Winning with the gradual process of decreasing the ventilator support and spontaneous bleeding trial assess the patient's ability to breathe while receiving minimal or no ventilator support. So let's understand the process before extubation. Patient is gradually weaned and kept in a spontaneous bleeding trial for half an hour to two hours and they monitor for extubation criteria. The first and foremost thing we need to assess while evaluating the patients for extubation is whether the underlying cause of respiratory failure or need for ventilator support has been resolved or not. So for the successful extubation, assessment of three key areas is necessary. The first one is respiratory, second cardiovascular and third neurologic. There are hundreds of things we need to evaluate in each of the areas. To make it as simple as possible, let's see some general but very important criteria in each area. The first one is respiratory status, where we assess for adequate ventilation, oxygenation and no sign of distress. Adequate ventilation is assessed by observing two but subtle criteria. The first one is RSBI. A rapid shallow breathing index. It is calculated by respiratory rate divided by tidal volume in liter. RSBI less than 65 indicate winning readiness. However, RSBI less than 105 is acceptable and has an approximately 80% chances of successful extubation. Where the RSBI higher the chances of successful extubation. And the second criteria is tidal volume. Inspiratory and expiratory tidal volume should be adequate with the minimum pressure support and PEEP of 5 to 8 cm of water or less. Adequate tidal volume should be at least 6 ml per kg of the predicted body weight. The third criteria is respiratory rate. Respiratory rate should be less than 35 per minute. The fourth criteria is actually related to the airway pressure and they are peak airway pressure and latent pressure. Peak airway pressure is the dynamic component that assesses lung compliance against the resistance met in the tube and in the respiratory airway. Plateau pressure is the static component that assesses the resistance felt to keep the alveolar open at the end of inspiration and is also called as inspiratory pressure. These both values should be less than 30 cm of water. The value greater than 30 indicates either the secretions or some kind of resistance in the airway or the alveoli. The peak actually indicates thinking of the tube or pressure in the or secretions in the airway, whereas P2 can indicate the serious condition like pulmonary edema. The next is FiO2. To assess the oxygenation status, patients should tolerate the FiO2 of 40% or less. Similarly, PIP and pressure support. Patients should be able to tolerate the pressure support and PIP of 5 to 8 cm of water or less. In addition, arterial blood gas analysis helps in determining the extubation criteria and the first one is PAO2 that is partial pressure of oxygen in the arterial blood and it should be more than 60 mmHg in FiO2 of 40% or less. And the next one is PF ratio. PF ratio is the ratio of partial pressure of oxygen in an arterial blood to fraction of inspired oxygen and it should be more than 150 in SiO2 of 40% or less to extubate the patient and the last one is oxygen saturation it should be 90% or more. Lastly, the thing I evaluate before extubation is work of breathing. There should be no dyspnea, no use of accessory muscles and the patient should be comfortable. So this was all about respiratory status. Now the second is cardiovascular status and before extubation patients should be in minimal ionotropic support or more ionotropic support and lastly neurologic status 
generally the patient should be alert, awake and should have the GCS of course more than 8 and it's better if they have 11 and there should be no seizure patient and patient should be comfortable.